Endeavour Houston, we see a nominal Miko. Welcome to space. A trajectory is the path that a spacecraft is going to take through space. It's only caused by having speed and the effect of gravity from things like planets and stars and moons. Because in space, gravity is the only thing that can actually really put any force on our spacecraft. Examples of trajectories could be orbiting the Earth, going between the Earth and the Moon, called a translunar trajectory, an interplanetary trajectory, say between the Earth and Mars, or an interstellar trajectory between our solar system and any other star. Let's take a look at some trajectories and how they'd work. A simple trajectory could be just a straight line out in space, like this, but in reality, space isn't entirely empty. There's things around us to pull on us with their gravity. So let's put a planet here. And we'll see that as we approach the planet, we curve around it due to the planet's gravity pulling on us. If we approach the planet slower, it'll have more time while we're near it for the gravity of the planet to pull on us. And so the curve is more extreme. And if we would go faster, then we're near its gravity for less time. And so it doesn't have as much time to pull on us and we'll go with less of a curve around it. If we go too slow, then we'll just crash into it, which is no good. As we're approaching, its gravity is pulling us towards it, so we are speeding up. And as we are going away, gravity is still pulling on us, which is slowing us down. This is symmetrical. At symmetrical points on either side here, we are going at the same speed here as here, same speed here as here. To change our trajectory, which is something we'd like to do, we need to use our engines. But before we can discuss that, we need to talk about velocity. Velocity is a combination of speed and direction, and it can be most easily represented by an arrow. So to change this, we can fire our engines in the same direction or opposite direction to change the size of that arrow. If we want to change the direction of our velocity, it's actually most efficient for us to fire our engines at 90 degree angles like this, which can change our velocity here. The size of a change in our velocity is measured as delta v, where delta means change and v is short for velocity. We could see our starting velocity here and our finishing velocity here after our rocket burn, and we can connect those two, and that gives us this arrow here. The size of that arrow is our delta v for that maneuver. Delta v could be measured as any other speed, maybe in kilometers an hour or miles an hour, but we use meters per second in the spaceflight world. If you're planning a mission, you would figure out all the maneuvers like this that you're gonna to have to do, and then you would total up the number of delta v that you need, and you would go to your engineers and say, the spacecraft has to have, say, 1,000 meters per second of delta V to complete this mission. And then they can go and build the spacecraft to be able to maneuver with that much delta V. However, getting into the inner solar system or really far out into the outer solar system would require a lot of delta V if we would just be going to be using rocket engines. As such, we can design our trajectories specifically to take advantage of something called a gravity assist. Gravity assists are commonly known as gravitation slingshots because, well, just take a look at what the Voyager 1 probe does here. It comes up past Jupiter and then flings past it like this. When I first saw this, it, it didn't make much sense to me. It seemed like it was just getting speed from nowhere because I thought of what happened earlier. As you're going towards the planet, you speed up, but as you go away, it slow you down. So how does it somehow speed up going away? Well, the trick to that is that we have to remember that this whole view we're looking at is orbiting around the sun with this speed here. So we put that speed on the planet and then we put that speed on the spacecraft as it's approaching and we put it on the spacecraft as it's going away. Now when we combine the speed of the spacecraft relative to the planet and the speed of the spacecraft around the sun, we see what happens here. 
this is much smaller than this. It's increased. And that's because this triangle here, this speed around the planet, has been bent in this direction to flatten that triangle into this straighter arrow, which then logically has a longer length, more speed in that velocity. So that's how it's worked. It's actually the fact that the speed has been bent around the planet to go in the same direction as that planet's speed around the sun. But it hasn't gotten this extra speed from nowhere. This gravity assist has slowed down the planet ever so slightly. That's because the planet is really big and the spacecraft is really small. In fact, the difference made to the planet is so small that we can treat it as being essentially nothing. The gravity assist technique can also be used in reverse to go from this high speed to a lower speed, getting us further into the inner solar system. This is being used by spacecraft like the Parker Solar Probe. So there we have it. Trajectories and gravity assists. They are simply space.